Hello everyone and welcome to the Stream Tick channel guys. So for today's video I'm gonna show you step by step uh, TIG welding techniques on a 10 inch uh, SCAD 40 uh, pipe. This is filled weld in a unit. It's, uh, it's a live unit. Uh, so we got this, uh, I got this vertical weld. I had to do it on a T fitting here. Uh, this is uh, done by uh, night shift guys. Uh, they did um, they put three tacks on this pipe, uh, not really beautiful tacks. I prefer to be tacks inside the bevel, not uh, on the pipe outside. But it is what it is. Uh, the fit up, as you see, uh, I got a high low on the right side uh, of the pipe. And on the right side, mill, three mil gap on the top, uh, four or five on the sides. So the gap is not really even. Uh, the pipe was oval, so they, they did a little bit. Uh, they ran a zip cut through, try to, they they were opening up. Uh, they spent some uh, time uh, to do a proper fit up. Uh, as you can see, the ADS D2, so this is a carbon pipe, so requires some preheat. It's gonna be 300 uh, Fahrenheit preheat. As I said, the gap is not even, so usually when I start uh, on the bottom, I like to, I like to back feed or uh, feed the rod from the top. Uh, in this case, uh, it's really tight on the top, so I'm gonna start feeding rod on, here on the side, like uh, eight o'clock or uh, five o'clock, if uh, whatever it's uh, easier for you uh, to understand. So it's like uh, 10, 10 degrees um, to feed that rod inside. Uh, usually, I like to freehand, as I said, uh, and uh, do back feed and feeding rod from the top. So I'm gonna go with a heavy heater, uh, 350, uh, cup size 8, uh, tungsten. Uh, so for the stick out, usually this is my reference. I go inside if it's uh, just passing just a little bit that uh, edge of that bevel, that's uh, pretty much what I like. So you can... Uh, you can walk the cup, you can even uh, grab if you got lower size, like 6, then you can fit right inside that bevel, it's gonna be way easier if you walk the cup or just uh, wiggle that cup inside the root pro while progressing up, or you can uh, freehand. Okay, so for the root, uh, 120, uh, 0 R control, and uh, that's it, uh, once you preheat the sides, uh, connect, uh, add rod and just keep the rod right in the middle and uh, stretch that puddle just be careful for that uh, tip of your tungsten you don't want to dip inside you don't want to ruin your sharp tip uh, just uh, just uh, try to do constant feed especially like uh, when you're going up on the sides eight o'clock eight o'clock on one side eight nine o'clock uh, same thing from the other side uh, four o'clock three o'clock uh, try to do a constant a constant feed uh, or lay wire technique uh, whatever it's easier for you and then later you can switch uh, dipping technique uh, especially like in this case I got a high low on the top and that's the best place you want to have high low especially when you got oval pipe like uh, I do here so I prefer to have a zero high low or the and at the bottom and if only place to be high low that's top and that's this is in this case so i know the gravity will do the rest if it's uh getting tight you know if uh, your gap shrinks uh grab a grinder open up a little bit uh in this case i'm uh i'm going here up to 10 10 11 o'clock just gonna double check once again. I wanna show you guys here the root. That uh, looks good. Uh, you change, uh, you know, you can plan, uh, you can always plan one thing, one technique, but in the field everything changes. Uh, so it's good to have the arsenal of your techniques, you know, uh, so you can always apply. Uh, things change. So you gotta be ready. You gotta ready, be ready to adapt uh, to any situations. So you can uh, dipping technique, you can lay wire, you can back feed, uh, you can freehand, you can walk the cup, uh, whatever. 
uh, whatever it takes uh, to get the job done. But as I said, you have to have a skill set. Uh, that's why it's crucial to just uh, to learn as much as you can. Uh, the more you burn, uh, more you learn, guys. There's uh, no other way around. As I said, this is the top. Uh, I got a high low. This is like three mil difference, and uh, that's the only place I like to have high low on the top, as the the gravity will do the rest. It'll create that uh, nice and uniform route for you. I like to usually have uh, heavier roots. I like to run uh, really hot on my hot pass, so I'm not worried about any sag back or uh, any stuff like that. And you can see by the route uh, where was uh, lay wire or constant feed and uh, where is the dipping technique. It just uh, changes that uh, little changes in the uh, in the appearance of the, of the route. Here, uh, when you start, uh, I like to preheat once that. Always use grinder, I like to do that, uh, especially when you know it's going to be 100% x-ray, uh, I like to grind stop starts. Even when, as I said, uh, even if your gap starts shrink, uh, stop, uh, don't be too, you know, don't be lazy guys, don't take any chances, don't take any risk, especially when you have tools and grinders, just stop, take extra five couple minutes and open up uh, rebevel again. You can just do play with one side of the bevel. You don't have to ruin both sides. Just uh, I like when I if I can wiggle one eight, uh, that's that's good enough. Or you can switch to three thirty two, whatever it's easier for you actually. Okay, now we continue on. Uh, try to close now the this route pass. Now I'm doing the other side, going up on the top. It's not a perfect spot, it's not that bad, it's just uh, little obstacles, you know, that um, above your head and I got to stand on a pipe and it's, as I said, it's a live unit, so everything is shaky. So it's a closure weld, so I have to, I don't have to, but uh, it's a good habit. Uh, I like to take a grinder and just uh, touch up on the surface all the way around and then run a buffing wheel. Just in case if you got any indications, uh, you know, or if you dip your tungsten or something, whatever, it's going to be shown. Uh, so for the hot pass, uh, I'm gonna go up uh, 160 and uh, 18 rod and just uh, side to side motion, you know, we just uh, walk that cap inside, stretch that puddle and don't worry, uh, just uh, adjust your travel speed, you know, adjust your travel speed, uh, depends uh, how much amp you can handle, but I like to go hot. I like to go even hotter. This is uh, 160. Well, usually 180. That's good enough. It's hot and it's gonna cover all those uneven spots on your route pass, so you don't have to worry about anything. You can even go 332 and 160, but you just gotta speed up a little bit faster. You don't wanna pass too much. Okay, now we're gonna. Now it's just a fill pass game and uh, fill to flash. So I'm gonna go up 200. Uh, run a buffing wheel for your each pass, uh, good habit. So 200 amps uh, and uh, just gonna walk the cap all the way up. It's gonna be one pass and that's it. And I'm gonna do one more pass uh, just to make a fill to flash. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit wider stretch. You can go two passes, whatever, it's easy for you. I like to finish as uh, fast as I can and uh, this is uh, just, just how I roll, this is just uh, how I like to do, I like to finish. I like to finish fast and uh, be done with it. Don't want to spend too much uh, time welding, spend, uh, you know, it's hot, loud, live unit as I said, so. I like to finish it and go for micro break. Okay, now this is a fill to flash. You can see that was high low. Now it's visible when you when you do your fill to flash, and you can actually see it's a couple mil. It's not a big deal, but it's okay. It's just 100% X-ray, so I just want to make sure to do every step by step uh, via proper steps. 
take uh, take couple couple minutes extra, guys, if you're not sure, you know, to clean uh, with prep and all that. Especially if you know it's uh, if it's prep uh, by the 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 opposite shift. It's easier when you prep and you're gonna weld, then you know what, what you got. And this is for the capping part. That's the best part. Uh, the, the only thing uh, here, start good, but uh, it's uh, just rod. It's, a, it's not like 70S6, it's a little bit dirty. I don't want to say dirty, but it's it's not like 70s6. You can't expect really nice and shiny uh, uh, cap to have that weld. Even though I got nice uh, proper setup uh, for my argon flow through my torch, uh, it's like 15 uh, to 230 CF uh, age. It's just uh, this is a new spool. Uh, this is actually both new. Uh, the fitting that T is the new. Uh, the top and the bottom on that uh, horizontal. That's uh, old existing one, and uh, these three two pieces are brand new. Uh, that's it. Uh, you can see all that uh, kind of impurities. Just uh, the way how the, that material is. Uh, the, that broad. It just uh, attracts all that uh, little impurities. It's like a little grease. I had to stop a couple times. To adjust uh you know to position reposition myself and that's it pretty much uh guys uh for this video today uh, just uh use all that tools you got uh that's that's the reason why you have all that tools uh don't be lazy take your time do the proper steps and uh, you can apply everything what i did in this video and you 100 percent you're gonna be sure as you can see it was x-rayed and everything is good uh, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for, so for supporting this uh, channel. Give it a thumbs up and like, share, and see you in the next one, guys. Take care and play safe.